Hello and welcome to this online art lesson. So today we'll be painting an apple still life in a monochromatic color scheme using crimson or red paint. Now if you've not heard of this term before, a monochromatic color scheme refers to a palette that consists of variations of a single color using different shades, tints and tones. It is a very harmonious approach to uh, color mixing where the focus is on exploring the various values of a single hue or color pigment. Now an example of monochromatic color scheme by a famous artist is the blue period of Pablo Picasso. During this phase of his artistic career, Picasso primarily used shades and tints of blue in his paintings, creating a, a melancholic and introspective atmosphere. One of the notable works from his blue period is the painting titled The Old Guitarist, where shades of blue dominate the composition, evoking a sense of sadness and so on. In this particular painting, Picasso uses different values of blue, ranging from deep dark blues for the shadows to pale, almost white blues for the highlights. Now, the blue period is just one example of how a monochromatic color scheme can be employed by an artist to create a distinct visual and emotional effect in their artwork. Right, now that we have a clear understanding of what a monochromatic color scheme is, let's dive into the main lesson and explore how to paint an apple still life using this fun and easy approach. So step number one, this is optional. You might want to prepare your canvas by applying a thin layer of white paint to cover the canvas and create a smooth surface. This will also help the paint adhere better. And then step number two, you're going to need to sketch out uh, our still life. So using a very light hand and a soft pencil like 2B or a 4B, draw the outline of the apple and any other objects you might have chosen for your composition and then you're going to map out the tonal values such as the shadows and highlights in your sketch. So we are going to start by uh, applying a base coat of red. I have used here crimson red and that's what I have uh, taken lots of on my palette because we will be using the same red to create the darker tonal values and the lighter tints and highlights. So the base coat is to be applied only on the sections where you're going to have the darker values and the uh, mid-tones. The reason is uh, the, if you if you prepare a batch of really dark color and you apply it as is it that contrast might be too dramatic and what we are aiming for here are subtle transitions in all the layers and the textures the brush marks to weave into each other so it looks three-dimensional all right so then I'm going to draw some more of that red add some paints gray and create a darker value and then I refer back to my reference picture and then apply that darker tone exactly where I can see the darker values. Now the idea here is to gradually build those darker tones and not expect to have a dramatic contrast right away. So take your time to gradually create those darker values. Once you're happy with uh, most of the darker shades, you can next switch to the mid-tone by mixing subtle tints of white to your crimson paint. Remember to clean your brush before you start mixing colors or whenever there is a change of color. So apply this color to the areas of the apple that are neither in shadow nor in direct light and blend the mid-tone with the darker shade to create a smooth transition. Now at this stage everything may not be perfect so you might look at this step as creating the base coat once the base coat and all the tonal values are dry, we would be going back and touching up areas with uh, the textures of the apple that you see, any special marks and features. So just relax and paint all the values that you can see right now in the first few steps. So now I'm going to go to the right hand side and I notice there are some brighter specks on the darker right sections I do that and then I clean my brush before I load some pure white pure titanium white on my brush and apply it on the brightest bright sections of the apple which is where the light touches the still life 
I also add a little bit of white to the darker tonal value and create a version of the uh, darker uh, darker color just so that the transition between the base or um, you know the darker color at the base is smoother so now that the base coat is near dry I add some more bolder lines and strokes using my flat brush the the tip of my flat brush and basically press the brush and flick it upwards using a very dark tonal value wherever I see or notice there are streaks on the apple uh, also when you're making these streaks and marks make sure you're following the profile of the apple uh, at the top I use a fine detail brush to add some white highlights which emerges from the central core of the apple. Now this is really important this detail around the stem of the apple. It really adds to the realistic look of the still life. Now we move on to the leaves again I refer back to the reference picture notice that there are some real intense darks on the top section of the leaf and use the darker red mix to do that section gently I clean my brush and add some mid tones to the center and then I rinse my brush again and thin down that paint to create a light, lighter version of that mid tone. Now this step is pretty easy, literally copy the tonal values as you see from the reference picture. There are just, uh, the bottom of the leaf is really red which means you're going to use the red and white mix uh, that you have created previously for the body of the apple and just color the underside. Now remember we just did the left side of the stem of the apple in a darker color. The remaining section we are going to add the pastel red or the red tinted color and then stand back and assess the apple that you've made so far adjust and tweak again so again this is a bit of a back and forth process because acrylics they dry darker and often you'll find that when one layer is dry some sections recede and some sections need uh, more darkness or lightness as the case might be be mindful of using a light touch to maintain the translucency and the brightness of the highlights. Also make sure that you are blending in all the edges between different color transitions. Now let this layer dry. Once it's dry, you can go back and add streaks on the apples that you see. You might be seeing small dots also clean the brush and if you notice any distinguishing marks once the previous layer is dry you can add those marks uh, right now essentially unless the previous layers are dry you'll find that some of the lighter colors aren't very visible So the next what we are going to do is the shadow at the bottom of the apple. Now the shadow is really intense and dark underneath the apple and that's what you see me do here. I'm using the darkest tonal value that I have created on my palette and that is essentially red mixed with uh, paint spray. Uh, I'm going to paint that around the apple. Uh, till. Uh, till almost halfway and then I'm going to dilute this mix and fade it away as the shadow moves away from the apple. Now doing this makes it look very realistic. Uh, you don't want a solid mass of dark underneath the apple. It 
that won't look right and then to finish off this painting i recheck and see that some colors have receded on the leaf so i take the same really dark red and tidy up the section on the top of the leaf there let all the layers dry and take a step back and assess if any more touch-ups or tweaks are needed i think i love the apple as it is right now so there you have it a beautiful monochromatic still life painting of an apple using crimson or red paint remember to take your time be patient and enjoy the process i hope you found this tutorial helpful if you have any questions or comments please leave them below thanks for watching and happy painting